watching Montgomery Rivers. Community Television's live primary election night coverage. I am your host, Kristen Wright. And so we have been following all of the uh, biggest races that you have been thinking about for the past long while. And we want to uh, bring you a look at uh, those results uh, right now. And before we do that, I think we want to introduce a very special person that we have with us tonight. Uh, Susan is still here with us, uh, but we're excited to welcome uh, current Montgomery County Council Member at Large, Nancy Florine. Thank you for being with us tonight. It's mm. really nice to have you here. Um, let's look at the results before we talk. Uh, County Executive first, David Blair, 29%, right at the top there, tied with Mark Elrich. They've been neck and neck uh, pretty much all evening. Rose Krasna still there, third, 15%. Roger Berliner just uh, after her at, thir at 13. I think I said 13. She, Rose was 15. Yeah. Roger Berliner, 13. County Council at large, take a look. Hans Riemer, and this has remained the same all evening. R yeah. Hans Riemer there at the top at 12%. Will Jawando, 10%. Uh, Evan Glass at 8 pretty much neck and neck with Gabe Albernos there. So, um, and the, this is the rest of the, mm -hmm. the crowded field. Uh, Board of Education at large, Julie Riley, 32%. District 1, County Council District 1, Andrew Friedson, 28%. Anna Sol Gutierrez, uh, Reggie Oldock, third there. County Council District 2, Ed Amietetti, Tom Berleman, and Kyle Sefcik. So that's Republicans, yeah. Results are Craig Rice there. As we mentioned okay. earlier, he, I think, will win handily there, 73%. Mm -hmm. Sydney Katz and Ben Schneider, still about, I think, about the same as a little while yeah. ago. That's another one to watch closely, yep. uh, I think. So welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks so much. What do you make of everything you've seen so far well, tonight? I'm really looking forward to the next council meeting. Uh, we'll see. Uh, of course, uh, if, if the numbers hold for Blair, he's uh, head of Mark by, last I looked, by about 600 votes. Uh, that's pretty tight. Mm -hmm. uh, my experience, though, in these, um, historically, um, these numbers tend to hold. Yeah. But you know, we'll see, that's the edgy one. And uh, gosh, uh, no more women at large for a while. Yeah, how do you feel I, about uh, that? That's really very unfortunate, I think. Uh, and uh, women lost big tonight, are losing big. Well, uh, just being a woman doesn't get you anything. I could have told you that. Uh, <laughs> Somehow I knew that, Nancy. <laughs> I think we've discussed that a few times. It's a it's, uh, fact of life I've experienced over my uh, tenure. It's uh, really interesting. So what's the message here? We want new people. I mean, if David Blair wins, that is really something. Um, would you, I also would you look to see that uh, David Trone appears to be um, to own the sixth congressional. He does too. Yeah. We haven't seen that race. Yeah, yeah we haven't. Uh, that. So that's uh, interesting as well. Money, uh, money those two races. Well, um, it doesn't hurt, and it's people don't um, think that that is such a uh, deterrent, uh, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for the council, what this is showing, you know, what's really changing, it's changed bit by bit, but what we're getting, the people that we are getting on the council are not the kind of folks we used to have so much from the civic background, from yeah. the land use background. Uh, gosh, um, uh, the new uh, members are, are unused to what we actually deal with. Yeah. Uh, which a lot of land use stuff, although we've done a lot in the past few years. I think we've wrapped it pretty much for the next council for the time being. Um, and, you know, we deal with a lot of hard issues, and I'm not sure that they appreciate that it isn't so easy. Uh, we just did a fiscal plan for the county going forward, and the rate of uh, revenue growth that we anticipate is pretty minuscule compared to our ongoing obligations. So how that's going to be managed, both by the council and a new executive, it's going to be really, really interesting. And with new people, particularly if it's David Blair, this is a whole new world for him. Yeah. So he's going to have to learn the mechanics of how things work. Plus, the politics of the whole. Well, it's interesting. Plus, you know, I also you're going to want to look at the legislative results. Uh, we are losing the people who were in the room. Sheila Hickson, Rich Malino. Mm -hmm. They were f in there fighting for Montgomery County. And Gone the by this is election. If Rich had 
stayed in there, he'd be the chair of budget. So what does that mean for Montgomery County? The battle is going to be all about money, money, money next year. Uh, it's going to be about the uh, Kerwin Commission report and wh how are we going to split the baby? How big is the baby going to be and who gets what? And if we don't have a team that sticks together in Annapolis that really fights for Montgomery County, uh, that's going to be really interesting. And, <laughs> you know, the rest of the state still really believes that our that streets, our streets are, paid, are with paid with gold. And I, yeah. I used to think, you know, they'd get over it. Well, the last <laughs> time I was testifying there, it was very clear uh, that was the reaction of legislators from across the state. So mm -hmm. the Montgomery County delegation has to prove and demonstrate that the streets are not paid with gold. And that's a challenge, going to be a challenge, because everyone's been running on this progressive ticket. Right, right, that right. That involves right. spending a lot of money. And, so I might and how is that going to work with Annapolis and Montgomery County's growing needs? And it's I going might to be a really interject to throw in, you know, the next thing that if the numbers hold and Ben Jealous is elected governor, he knows right. nothing about nothing. Well, I, I think if Ben Jealous wins tonight, Mr. Hogan will be on it. will continue. Yeah. yeah. That's, I, a, I think, uh, and I just universal want to view. say, I want to interject here. Nancy um, is so unique and is so well loved. <laughs> Nancy and I go back a long time to the early 80s. But we do. What, what I want to say about Nancy is Nancy is so well respected. And there was a hope among a lot of people in the county that she would have run for county exec. And had she run, I am confident that David Blair wouldn't be in the race. And I think we could be looking at our county executive. She chose not to do that. And and as a result, it appears we're gonna have a man again for county executive. But 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 I think that was a loss. But you know, Nancy <laughs> has a right to walk away from office. Well, well you any, know, any look, regrets uh, or uh, rethoughts? Time for a break. That? No, no, no I, I'm yeah. not feeling feeling jealous. You know, look, look uh, listen to the voters. I, I gotta say, I really did take the term limits vote uh, personally. Not so much that I had planned to run again for this job, but I think it was a statement of the community. Mm -hmm. They wanted a different approach to things. Mm -hmm. Now, we'll see if the numbers hold the way they're shown now. They made that decision. And I think that's something for everyone to remember. Mm -hmm. You know, the great thing about being an at-large member of the county council is you, there's always someone in Montgomery County who agrees with you. <laughs> you know, we represent a large uh, 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 percent of the, well, we represent all members of the community, all of whom who have different points of view and perspectives. And I got to tell you, this whole county is not the world of Tacoma Park. The other thing I was going to say about these uh, election results, that this is going to uh, lessen the hold of Tacoma Park on Montgomery County decision making. I don't know where Will Joando lives. Uh. I think Probably he, Silver Spring someplace, but I don't I'm know. Yes, sure. I believe so. And Does he Evan, live in Tacoma Park? No, but Evan, Evan lives, Glass lives. I know where he lives. It's a, not in Tacoma Park, per se. But, I but mean, I have three colleagues who can carpool yes, easily. It, yeah, and <laughs> yes, but he lives in Silver Spring, too, and, and Gabe is in Kensington. Yeah. So Still, the, well, and that's the shame. Uh, bless them all. Um, what I, w I was really hoping that uh, Marilyn would make it because... The up she county, still could. Maybe. I, you know, no offense to the rest of them, but the up county is woefully unrepresented. And we talked about this earlier yeah, that we did. they don't mm -hmm. have the same numbers of Democrats. Well, you know, and that, the real question is what are the numbers? Is, has our, is our turnout exceeding the awful ter percentages of 2014 where we were at 17%? I've seen the numbers that I've seen so far, you know, in 14, I think I needed 47, 57,000 votes. We haven't seen to make any it. numbers. Well, the numbers exist, yeah. but I think they're pretty low. But, of course, they're split every which way, so it's hard to tell. And the I'm other... Hearing, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a bit distracted. I'm hearing that uh, we may hear from David Blair any second now. Um, so we're kind of standing by to hear from him live. And we know that he obviously is doing very well uh, tonight. So just know that we may okay. we may just suddenly I had a break new, I, I had a good uh, chat with him this morning. Fairy. Tooth Fairy. He remembers to be the Tooth Fairy. 
that was my big line. And I couldn't remember that. He is the father to our children. He's my husband. And hopefully, fingers crossed, the next county executive. Wow. Wow, that was worth the price of admission. Thank you. We got a barn burning tonight, don't we? Oh my goodness. So eight months ago, we were unknown and a huge underdog, and now we're in a fight for our lives in a neck and neck race. And so we don't know the outcome yet, but we have so much to celebrate. And let me tell you why. We're gonna celebrate our friendships. So many old ones and so many new ones. We're gonna celebrate our diversity. Just look around this room. We assembled a team from not all around the county, not all around the country, but from around the world, and we brought them here, and from that diversity, we got the best ideas. And we're going to celebrate our integrity. When our competitors went negative, and they did, and again, we didn't follow. We held our heads up high. We will all sleep well knowing that we ran an extremely positive campaign focused on the issues that matter most. Okay, so David Blair there at his headquarters, sounding mm -hmm. very confident, yeah. but still neck and neck, right? Uh, I mean, as far as we I don't understand. Know how, many, how many precincts are reporting yet and uh, what, that the, says what the break is. Right. But I yeah, think, we're, think so they're getting close. To the finals. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, as we've been talking about all evening, uh, Blair and Elrich have been close, but again, we don't know the number of precincts reporting at this point. Um, oh, here we go. This is what we have. Don't know the number of precincts reporting, but neck and neck with. Well, that's putting Mark, Mark on top, Elrich. so. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. 29%. Okay, well, I'm being told last we heard it was with 58%. Can we see of precincts the rest reporting. of the, um, exec candidates just to get a sense of where they are in the pecking order now. Okay, WTOP is reporting this. these are the results with 79, 79, 79% of, of precincts reporting. So well. it's close, it's tight. Uh, but that was David Blair there live at his headquarters uh, talking about uh, how far he's come. And Nancy Florine has been, we, you know, have been talking about uh, how he has, well, nobody to had come heard this of David Blair without eight any ago. name recognition right. before. We, we did, uh, and it's amazing when you have that kind of money. Uh, very interesting. Well, it's a tribute to the Washington Post, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, the endorsement. And the you know, he had the resources to put into this. Uh, that makes a difference. All those, all that advertising. Yeah, it does. It does make a make a big difference. And he, you know, he ha he had a lot of. Um, a lot of workers out there working for him. You know, it all matters. It yes. You know, the thing about uh, campaigning is uh, everyone will argue about every what what you should spend your money on, mm -hmm. and no one will ever agree on what it is that you need. Do you need to spend more money on TV, mail, knocking on doors, phone staffing, call. phone call? You name it. Uh, Everyone will argue about there is no clear path these days, and because yeah. there's really no only one print press left, and if the newsprint dries up, we'll see what happens with that with the Trump activity, but uh, tariffs. But uh, uh, when where do you, people but, get their information? But Nobody if you, really knows. But if you have money, you can do everything, and it's a crapshoot. And, well, and he was able to do that. Well, well, Susan, you even said that your neighbor had a new David a Blair, door knocker door knocker today. today. Yep. They weren't home, so they got one. And you know, it's interesting. Um, the literature came uh, endlessly, and there was one Democrat who was very irate at the poll today, and she said, I'm switching to the Republican Party because I am fed up with all the phone calls. She said, I know I won't get phone calls if I switch to the <laughs> Republican Party. 
And I said to her, well, you're probably right, ma'am. But uh, it was a little overwhelming, and people did talk about the trees today. And, um, <laughs> and that is a problem, because people were so overwhelmed. I received today, when I got home, polls were almost closed, seven pieces of literature, yesterday, 15. Yeah. yeah. And, and well, what are you going to do? I you know, uh, people complain to me, and I say, well, what would you suggest? Uh, how do we get information to you? And as it is, uh, frankly, the, the mail doesn't tell you very much about the candidate. They certainly don't, they never tell you where they went to school. They don't even tell you where they live, uh, except per presumably in the district that they're, where they're running for the job. But and David and what's the relevant uh, material that uh, you really need to make a decision? For everyone, it's different. Yeah. Uh, obviously, gender isn't the driving force. Um, and I'm not sure wealth is. Honestly, I think that's what um, people like to pick at. Uh, but I think that people, I think largely, want to uh, support someone that they believe re represents their views. N or, N or someone where they, who they feel they can trust to make the right decision. But Nancy, I think in light of what happened two years ago in other parts of the country, women made a difference and, and quite I'm appalled at the lack of women. I mean, I give mm. Anna Sol credit. She's been around a long time. She came second in that race, which I find over. I'm quite frankly, I'm surprised by that. But who did women vote for today? That's what I would like to know. You know, I do want to get to uh, before we go <laughs> to uh, campaign finance because that's another important issue that's been on the table. So the way candidates finance their election campaigns is new in Montgomery County. In 2014, a county council set uh, a minimum amount for candidates to raise before qualifying to run and limited individual campaign contributions. So candidates who agree with the new system and who meet these criteria qualify to receive matching funds from a taxpayer funded system. So those who chose not to participate continue to raise money the traditional way. So this primary election is the first time candidates have used the new system. Our senior reporter Doug Tallman talked to Phil Andrews, one of the people who championed the change. Take a listen. And what are your thoughts about um, how uh, public election uh, financing has worked out this term, time around? Well, I think it's gone off to a good start uh, because a lot of people are using it. Uh, there are, I think, 22 candidates that have qualified for public financing. There were a number that tried but didn't make it. Uh, and most of the incumbents on the council who are running for something, eight of the nine are running for something, and about half of the challengers running for county council or county executive are using public financing. Uh, there is public financing be used in every one of the district council races. There's at least one candidate that has qualified. Uh, in the at-large race, about a dozen of the 33 Democratic candidates have qualified, uh, and three of the six Democratic candidates for county executive have qualified for public financing. So it's getting well used, incumbents and challengers are using it, uh, and uh, Republicans uh, have qualified too, like uh, uh, Mr. Amitetti in uh, District uh, 2. So I think that's good. And, and the other things are that there have been a, there's been a huge increase in the number of small donors in these elections. Common Cause did a study a few months ago after the annual reports were filed in January that showed a big increase in the number of small donors. And of course, that is expected because you can only have small donors if you're uh, seeking to qualify public funding. But that's the goal of the, of the measure, is to empower uh, individual residents of the county and to encourage, incentivize candidates to go seek them out. Uh, and they're doing that. So it has really changed how a number of candidates have run for office. Uh, candidates like George Leventhal, who's running for county executive, have talked about how different it is to be running under this system than the, uh, the old system. Uh, and since you mentioned county executive race, you've got at least one person who is um, just writing himself a check, um, mm -hmm. David Blair. I mean, how do you, how would public election financing um, counteract uh, a candidate like that? Well, what it does is it gives the rest of the field the opportunity to get their message out. It's not meant to provide candidates with exactly the same amount of money that someone else has, but the system was designed to give candidates enough money to run a competitive campaign. So just like uh, when Abraham Lincoln was asked how long should a man's legs be, he thought and he said, long enough to reach the ground. So that's the idea with this. There should be enough money available through public funding 
to enable a candidate to run a viable campaign for whatever office they're seeking. And the other thing is that there is no limit on what a candidate can raise or spend. So unlike many public financing systems that have a hard cap on what a candidate can raise and spend, there is no limit, on theoretically, on what a candidate can raise or spend. You, a candidate can raise as many $150 contributions as they possibly can. So they can attempt to keep up with a big donor or with a, a self-funded candidate or with a candidate that's getting huge amounts of money from a special interest. So that was the goal, not to try to match uh, what a privately financed candidate or a candidate deep pockets might spend. All right, so we're, we're curious to know um, if you, you know, agree with that assessment of this first year of, of campaign. Well, if finance. your goal is to get more people to run, uh, that goal has been achieved. Uh, if you look at the headliners, uh, I'm not so sure it makes a huge difference. I, I'm mm -hmm. not sure about the, uh, uh, for the at-large candidates. Um, I think Gabe, I think they all, let's see, Gabe, um, Will Jawando, um, Evan. Evan, and uh, Hans, they were all using uh, public financing. Mm -hmm. So, there you uh, go. would they have and done Maryland it? Maryland wasn't. Maryland wasn't. Uh, the private money may, may or may not be available. You can't count on it. I mean, it certainly so worked for them. Uh, for county exec, it uh, looks like Mark's on the, uh, or Mark and um, Blair are neck and neck. Neck and neck. If and not exactly tied at this moment. And I'm, I'm wondering if we're going to go into to July 10th to find out the real answer to the. And Andrew Friedson, who is leading in, in District yeah, that 1. That was private money. That was private money, mm -hmm. and he had a lot of it. Yeah. Here, so, the, here are the, the results. And as you said, uh, Nancy, Mark Elric, and David Blair, completely neck and neck. We understand Blair has is ahead by 70 votes. Something like that. Of course, not all seven, the precincts are in yet. Right. Uh, uh, and we may be looking at the provisionals and absentees. Uh, right, we're we'll hearing and there nearly 90% nearly of precincts reporting. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's, that's uh, very, close. very, 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 very close. Very close. So, no, uh, no. you know, it, uh, more public money went into this. Would uh, It's hard to say uh, what would have happened without it. I think yeah. we would have had fewer candidates, mm -hmm. but right. we have, you know, a lot of uh, candidates with low percentage numbers, and uh, but those I, top I four did take public finance. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Maryland but, didn't. But uh, Hans didn't do it before; he didn't have to. Um, I don't know that the others would have not managed otherwise. Right. I don't know. It's, it's hard, hard to, say. to pro prove the negative and right. all this. So here are the county council at large yep. numbers, which have mm -hmm. remained consistent. Yeah. I think, the whole I think evening. that's done. Yeah, it, it could be. I don't think it's going to change. Yeah, yeah, all men. And so it's so poor old Nancy Navarro, yeah. but she's going to be the next uh, president. Is she? Uh, yeah. For are you announcing year. tonight? Huh? No, no I thought I'm just you were going to be the next president of the Nancy. county council. Yeah. No. <laughs> Well, nah. She's one of the few with some experience. Yeah, well. And uh, have we heard anything lately about what's happening in um, the Sid Katz? Oh race? yes, that that was one we were watching. That was pretty close as well. I think that uh, Katz was just ahead by a few, what was it? Like a few percentage. Well, there yeah, it is. He was it's about the same as it was. Yeah. Before. Yeah, I think so. We'll be fine. I think yes. Oh, let's too. see here. What do I have on this? Uh, Cindy Katz. A little bit. Fifty-three percent. Schneider, yeah. 47. Uh, oh, here are the, the, the uh, governor's He's race. ahead by 700 votes. It's Jealous not a huge amount. 700 votes. That's not a lot. Percent. No, it that's isn't. not a lot. But notice this. 10%. That's not a lot. So Ben Jealous, oh, 40 percent here. Richard Baker, 30 yeah. percent. Jim Shea, 8 percent there. Well, there you go, Mr. Hogan. Then be, so, be very happy in Republican headquarters. That, too. Yeah, that could be decided at this point. But yep. I guess we don't know for sure at this I point. I think that is pretty much over. Yep. So yeah. there you have it. Very interesting. Interesting. Uh, I, I think Nancy you. has a very cogent comment in that that's what I was hearing today at the polls, that if Ben Jealous were to win, he is so far to the left, and that four years ago, or two years ago, Hillary Clinton did carry Montgomery County. And that maybe that means the more mainstream Democrats, and that 
Vangelis did not fare so well. Uh, with the infusion of money and the enthusiasm of unions, he carried the vote. But come November, um, Marylanders, Democrats, are not, on the whole, that extreme. And I think it's going to take a small uh, miracle for Hogan to be defeated. However, I believe it's tomorrow that the gubernatorial candidates are going to meet um, at state party headquarters, maybe it's the next day. And at some time ago, they all made a promise that they would all support the winner, no matter who the winner was. Will that come through? And will there be um, a uniform message and unilateral support? It could make a difference. You know, depending on what happens in the White House till then, that could make a difference. Well, we'll see. I mean, uh, uh, Democrats were uh, soliciting uh, volunteers at the polls today for November. Uh, the problem in Montgomery County, as you know, Susan, is that we tend to fold up our tents after the primary here uh, because our decisions are made, are made today. Uh, and uh, the, the larger races, uh, we don't always get out the troops for that. I know uh, Kathleen Matthews has been working to uh, encourage people to stay involved and engaged. And, you know, wounds will be licked over the next <laughs> month or two. Uh, but come Resumes September, will be sent out Come quickly. September, uh, people will get their act together. But at the end of the day, uh, let's be honest, uh, the Republican Party, the National Party is going to put in big money in Maryland to keep Hogan in. And um, can those California people who finance the Jealous campaign uh, keep paying? That's going to be the question. I mean, it's they a put a million dollars in in the past week or so, mm -hmm. which yeah. I, you oh, well. know, kind of mind. Uh, they yeah. had our, my neighbors, you know, there's someone who uh, like Ben. So that'd be interesting. Good for Susie. At least we've got a Montgomery County person in the game here. Uh, and that's always a good donor. thing. Yeah, um, uh, it is. It is going to be interesting. There are outsiders, <laughs> and there is money. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that was a very interesting story tonight. And yeah. women lost. All right. Well. Oh well. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Onward. So much. Yes. Thank you for being <laughs> with us tonight. That's all we have time for. So we thank you um, sincerely for your perspective and mm -hmm. for your service. And we thank all of our panelists here tonight for this important discussion about this election and the future of Montgomery County and what it all means. And of course, thank you to Susan Haltemans for being such a wonderful resource for MCM and to the county when it comes to understanding um, our politics here in the county. MCM would also like to thank our PEG partners for all the support they have given to this coverage and particularly to this broadcast this evening. So be sure to stay with mymcmedia.org for the latest election results and coverage tonight and tomorrow. So we thank you so much for watching and for supporting MCM. Good night.